It's been way too long since I've been on camera. It's so weird. Nez got scared by a leaf. I can show you Nez now. Oh my God, Nez, come here. Nez on camera, everybody. Look at this beautiful little baby. I usually just show photos of these cats, but now they're here in the flesh with us. I can play with Nez's tail while I read the stories. I'm sure you can see the Pikachu in the background keeping us company. It was so nerve wracking setting up the camera this morning. I was like, I don't want to do this because I'm so scared. But at the same time, I really do want to do it because I miss doing these sorts of episodes. So yeah, here we are and let's get into the episode. Am I the gay hoff for telling my mum's family that I don't owe her because she had gender disappointment? So my mum never wanted a boy, she wanted girls, and apparently her dream was four daughters, but she had me 16 male first. I have seen photos and videos of the day that I was born. She cried hysterically when they told her that I was a boy, and then she refused to hold me. After we were cleaned up, she cried about not using the name that she'd chosen, and said that she didn't know how to move on from it. Eventually my paternal grandma took me, and she was the person to hold me in photos and videos taken during the rest of our hospital stay. My paternal grandma was my my sole parent figure for the first eight years of my life. She took care of me and I spent so much time at her house. Sometimes I was there for weeks. Then she had a brain bleed and died. Oh, that's so sad. So I was left with a mum who wanted girls and not a boy and a dad who wanted to be a provider and nothing more. My mum had my sister Lily two years after me. So mum got her girl and Lily got all her attention while I got grandma until I was eight and then nobody. My mum and Lily are super close and mum adores Lily. Lily got the bigger bedroom and she gets the gifts and she gets all her favorite snacks. She gets to do all the extracurricular activities that she could ever want to and her birthdays are huge parties with huge gifts. At Christmas she gets at minimum 25 gifts from mum alone. Yeah, that's not good. Mum typically gets me one, never anything I'd like or want but you know the thought that counts, which is zero. Oh god, this is so sad. I hope this one's not real. My mum's side of the family don't act too interested in making up for my lack of parental love and in the last couple of years mum and I have argued more and I give her a hard time. Dad's never around to give him one but mum Mom. If she wants to ignore me, then she can hear how sh it is. And if she wants to treat my sister like a perfect angel, then she can hear about it. Mum has mentioned how I ruined her dream of four daughters. Yeah, I don't see how you're going to be the a-hole here, OP. This is terrible. We were at Mum's parents' house Friday and Mum gushed about Lily doing good on a project and the scooter she got Lily to help her get around easier. She got Lily a custom helmet and a personalised lock for her scooter. She couldn't stop talking about it and I told her that she really does love to shower her favourite in gifts and praise. My mum's family told me I should take it easier on her and said that I should understand that we had some little troubles because of mum's gender disappointment. What an awful thing to say. Yeah, you should definitely go easier on your mum. You know that she didn't want you, right? <laughs> like, oh my god. Oh, we had some little troubles with gender disappointment, aka they're disappointed with OP. How awful. I told them I don't owe her sh because she had gender disappointment and that I didn't ask to be born to a mum who only wanted daughters. They told me that I lacked adult understanding and compassion. Am I the a hole. Not even a little bit. That's absolutely ridiculous. And such a load of crap too. You don't lack adult understanding and compassion. That's not what's going on. Yeah, like the top comment says, not the a hole. Your mum is toxic and extremely shallow. So many out there are desperate for a healthy baby, regardless of gender. She's blessed with just that and then rejects it. I'm so sorry that your mum is like that and for the loss of your grandmother. The good news is you're almost an adult. My advice is to focus on yourself and work hard so you can get out of there. Then you can choose when you see her and in what capacity. Capacity. Side note, I really hate the concept of gender disappointment and I feel like it's becoming even more obvious with these huge trendy gender reveals. Nobody needs to see their parents bratting because they're not what they expected. People need to grow the f*** up and realise what's important in life. And OP said, I actually saw some people react just like my mum on those. Watching one of your parents get hysterical and freak out because of the sex that you were born makes you feel really bad about yourself. It's how I felt anyway and I questioned if even my grandma really loved me, if mum didn't. Yeah, and how awful is that? That's so sad. And for the family members to say that OP needs to grow up. OP, your mum and your family members need to grow up. That's such a disgusting way to treat your own child. And the only real disappointment here is OP's mum. I can't get over that. That's straight up evil. Yeah, like this comment says, not the a-hole, but your mum really is. If I were in your shoes, I'd cut mother and anybody who supports her out of my life completely. And when and if you have kids, guess who doesn't get to meet her beloved granddaughter? Your mum. Yeah, that's so messed up. I'd never even heard about gender disappointment before. Imagine literally telling your 
child that you're disappointed that you got them. Like, what the hell are you doing? I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. It's like a shocked laugh because I can't believe that the people we're reading about are real. Yeah, like this other comment says, not the a-hole. Anybody who claims to have gender disappointment about their child is a pathetic failure of a parent. Yeah, like if you're actually saying that to your child, that's revolting. And yeah, of course, OP, you're not the a-hole. I don't even know how you would be the a-hole. I guess because you're getting sort of brainwashed by your evil family. Yeah, that's so messed up. It feels so good to be showing my face again. Also, for you guys who haven't seen my face before, I'm sorry if you've got gender disappoint- <laughs> No, I'm sorry if you're disappointed or confused because you pictured me to look differently than I look. I just assume that everybody has seen my face because I've shown my face a lot, I guess. Okay, post number two says, am I the gay hell for being topless in my own home? So immediately I'm going to say no because you're in your own home. <laughs> I live with my partner, so it's normal for me to be topless if I'm getting clothes from another room or if I shower and I need to go to the bedroom to grab clothes. Last night I was on my own as my partner was seeing family. I went in the shower and once I got out, I realized I hadn't picked a t-shirt up. So I went to go from the bathroom to the bedroom in just my trousers. Once I left the bathroom, I saw my girlfriend and her cousin who's 16 sat in the living room. I apologized and then I went straight to the bedroom to put a t-shirt on. After her cousin left, my girlfriend said that I shouldn't have been walking around topless. I pointed out that it was my home and I wasn't expecting guests, so I don't always need to be completely covered up. I told her that had she told me that she was bringing her cousin back and said what time they'd be back, then it wouldn't have been an issue, but she can't expect me to just know what she's planning. She just said again that it was embarrassing and inappropriate for her cousin to see me topless, but again, I pointed out that I had no idea she was even bringing her cousin back to our place, but she just said that I was deflecting from what she was saying. Am I the gay hole for being topless in my own home? Yeah, deflecting from what they're saying because there's nothing else to say. You're completely right here, OP. How the hell were you meant to know what was going on? And how were you meant to know that your cousin was going to be sitting in the living room? I'm going to say not the a-hole because I'm pretty sure you're not a mind reader. The top comment says you're not the a-hole, but I'm curious about something. Are you and your partner both female? Is the cousin a male? I'm failing to understand what the issue was. OP said I'm male and my partner and her cousin are females. Then what the hell's the issue? <laughs> are you serious? Even if you were a woman, OP, it shouldn't have been an issue. But you're just a dude with a top off. Who cares? You weren't flashing them anything. But also, once again, if you were a woman and you were flashing them something, it still does not make you the a-hole, OP. The comment below that says, okay, then I really don't understand the problem. It's not like you're a female flashing her breast to a minor. If the cousin has never seen a bare male chest, she's way too sheltered. Yeah, 100%, but even if OP was a woman, it shouldn't have mattered. But also, did they say that the cousin cared? Or is it only OP's partner that cares? Because it could definitely be the second one. We see stuff like that all the time on the subreddit. There'll be absolutely no issues and somebody's partner or somebody's friend or somebody's mom or dad or something will just make an issue that doesn't need to exist or get upset about something where nobody needs to get upset about it. Like that post that we read where the cousin had to sleep on the couch and I'm almost certain that the cousin that had to sleep on the couch didn't care about sleeping on the couch, but the partner of the person who wrote the post made a big deal about it. The second top comment says, not the a-hole. It's not like you knew that your partner would be bringing over her 16-year-old cousin, and I don't see anything inappropriate about being a guy without a shirt on in your own home. I mean, I often walk from my bathroom to my room after a shower with nothing at all, unless I know there's somebody else whose parts I may cross post-shower. Yeah, and the comment below that, the audacity is insane to me. You brought somebody into my house without my knowledge and you're upset that I wasn't prepared. Must be a freaking joke. Yeah, definitely. Like, oh, you're upset about something even though there was no way that I would have known about it? Yeah, that seems really rational, doesn't it? Chia is asleep on the bed right there, so I'm gonna grab her and show you guys. She's so beautiful. She's so cute. She has like the cutest little ball head. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but her face is really low. Look at the camera, Chia. Chia, look. And she's got the cutest little white mittens, little white sockies. Hello, I'm Chia. I'm baby. I'm sleepy baby. I just woke up from a nap. She's sitting right here in front of me now. I love that I can show you guys the cats now in real time. Jin's asleep over there, but he doesn't like to be picked up and he's like really squirmy and stuff. So I'll leave him. Okay. The next one that we're going to read is called, am I the gay hole for leaving after my in-law asked me to move out because I didn't cook a lunch one time? Two years ago, my sister passed away leaving behind two boys, David 12 and Peter 7. My brother-in-law was struggling to juggle everything and he was going to hire a maid to help care for the kids. 
kids. I couldn't stand the thought of somebody else raising them when they're my blood, so I offered to step in. For two years, I've been taking care of them as if they were my own. Every day, I'd wake up early and make their breakfast and clean the house and do the dishes and wash their clothes, feed and care for the 50 chickens on the property all while managing my own studies. And I did it all without a complaint. I wanted to because I loved them and I wanted to keep my sister's memory alive with them. One Sunday, after two years of doing everything without a single mistake, I went out for a walk. I asked David, now 14, to prepare lunch, which was a simple meal. He said that he could manage and I trusted him. It was the one day that my brother-in-law was off from work, so I thought maybe he could help too. A few hours later, I got a call from my in-law and to my shock, he told me to start looking for a new place because in his words, I wasn't helping enough. All because I asked David to handle one meal, one time in two years. I was so crushed. I thought I'd done everything right, but apparently that one day was enough for him to decide that I wasn't good enough. I didn't argue or fight back. I packed my stuff and I left quietly. Now my in-law is angry that I left without a word. Am I the gay half for leaving after everything I did just because I didn't cook lunch one time? Wait, so your in-law told you that you need to look for a new place, but then they said now my in-law is angry that I left without a word? That's like when cheaters are like, oh, why didn't you fight for our relationship? Like, why should OP say anything here? And also these posts are really confusing me because how are you the a-hole OP? Like, of course you're not the a-hole. How would you ever be the a-hole here? Yeah, like the top comment says, your former brother-in-law is pretty f***ing ungrateful. If you've been doing all the chores at the house, including caring for your nephews, what has he been doing? And the one time that you asked a 14-year-old boy to make lunch, your former brother-in-law says to leave? Something doesn't add up here. But hey, he told you to leave and you did. Let brother-in-law handle the house chores and the childcare and everything else you did. And why should you say anything? Not the a-hole. Yeah, that really reminds me of when cheaters say, oh, why didn't you fight for the relationship? Like, what were you meant to say here, OP? Oh, I'm so sorry that I did everything you said for years and didn't do anything wrong and I'm so sorry that you're ungrateful. The second top comment says, not the a-hole. Your brother-in-law is not a good person and doesn't raise correctly his children. He should show respect for somebody who sacrificed their own life for two years while that person could have had fun in parallel with studies. Are you sure brother-in-law didn't treat your sister that way? Thinking she was just some sort of slave in the house? I hope the children are going to remember what you did for them and they'll be more respectful than your father. If you can, keep in touch with them via email. Yeah, and also like the comment below that says, I'm not sure I understand. Your brother-in-law asked you to leave and he's now angry that you did what he asked? The comment below that says, probably expected her to apologize and then start taking on more chores? Yeah, maybe. I don't really understand what else it could be in this situation. That's so infuriating, which I'm realizing is something that we read about a lot. Every day it's infuriating, entitled, ungrateful people. But yeah, that's on a different level. That doesn't even make any sense. I'm still kind of confused about this one, but yeah, definitely not the a-hole. Okay, the next one says, am I the a-hole? I told my mother-in-law that's all on her. My five-year-old son's birthday is coming up and he wants a chocolate cake with chocolate icing. It's his birthday, so I said, yeah. My mother-in-law can be a selfish cow sometimes and my son was telling her how he's getting chocolate cake and also chocolate ice cream. My mother-in-law said that she didn't like that and that my son should get something that we all like. My son said, it's not your birthday, so you don't get a say. This would be normally disrespectful, but recently said this to my son when we went to his friend's party, when my son didn't like the cake flavor and we had the discussion about how the birthday person gets to choose their cake flavor because it's their special day. My mother-in-law was shocked and I told her the same thing that I told my son. When it's your birthday, you can get whatever flavor of cake you want. My mother-in-law called me a my son, a spoiled brat. So I told her, with that attitude, you won't be coming to the party. My husband was like, what the f and tried to talk me into ordering his mum a cake that she would enjoy after our son and I were rude to her? Oh, great. A husband that isn't helping. <laughs> I said, no, it's not her day. And that just teaches our son to act entitled at other people's parties if we don't stick to the rules and etiquette that we explain to him. That'll only make him confused and entitled and spoiled. My husband saw the truth in that because our son was excited about his birthday cake for his birthday and now understands that not everything is about him. Other people get to enjoy their special event how they want to and in return my son gets to enjoy his special event and occasion how he wants to. My mother-in-law doesn't seem to get that and wants my son to write her a sorry note <laughs> and what he did wrong. My husband and I don't feel like my son did anything wrong by repeating what his parents told him. My mother-in-law said that she's not coming to the birthday party or getting him a gift without the apology note. I told my mother-in-law that's all on her. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> don't come to the party then. What a giant a-hole. But also, why wasn't your husband standing up for you there, OP? You said at the end there, my husband and I don't feel like my son did anything wrong by repeating what his parents told him. So, did your husband sort of come around or something? Because initially there, he didn't stand up for you, did he? Yeah, the top comment, not the a-hole, but why is your husband not sticking up for you and your son? He's equally guilty for that. 
OP said my husband didn't know the backstory of why my son said that. He wasn't at my friend's party a few months ago when I took my son aside and I talked to him about hating the cake flavor. Yeah, the comment below that, has he since spoken to his mum? Your husband needs to tell his mum that under no circumstances is it okay to call you a or your son a spoiled brat. If he hasn't, he's still an a-hole in my books. Yeah, definitely. I hope he has said something. But yeah, once again, you're not the a-hole OP. The mother-in-law here sucks. Oh, you need to write me an apology note. Otherwise, I'm not going to come to the party. Don't come to the party then. Oh no, you're not going to come to the party. What a shame. This comment says, not the a-hole. Your mother's behavior is so entitled and rude that she got called on it by a five-year-old. That should sting. But it should definitely be a wake-up call that she's incredibly out of pocket. It's not spoiled at all to want to have your birthday cake be in your favorite flavor but it's incredibly spoiled and selfish to tell somebody else to change their birthday cake flavor to suit you there's somebody acting like a sport brat five-year-old here but it's not the actual five-year-old and hopefully mother-in-law sticks to her word you'll have a better time without her and her childish behavior in attendance when you're trying to teach your son how to act with maturity personally i think your son acted well his statement wasn't rude at all the rudeness was coming from your mother-in-law and he simply shut that down and stood up for himself that's a very impressive from a five-year-old Year old. Yeah, that's such a good point. The spoilt brat here is not the five-year-old. It's the mother-in-law. Wow, that's so infuriating. Oh, you need to write me an apology note. No, they definitely do not have to do that. The next one that we're going to read says, am I the gay hoff not wanting to share with my stepsister? My female 15 mum's fiance, Dan, is moving in with us soon. He has a four-year-old daughter, Lily, and her mum isn't around. We live in a three-bedroom house, but the third bedroom is pretty small. Before now, it was empty other than boxes of old stuff and a fold-out sofa that we use for guests when they come over. I was helping mum finally take the boxes to the charity shop, but she was worried about fitting Lily's furniture and toys in. Her room at Dan's is twice the size. Mum's bright idea was to keep that third bedroom as a playroom for us and leave the fold-out sofa so it can be used as a guest room still. And we'll share my bedroom. I don't really have many toys other than my PlayStation and some art stuff and a few board games and some old cuddly toys. I wouldn't spend any time in a playroom, so I thought mum's idea was a bit weird. I suggested that I just move into the smaller room. My current room is big enough for all of Lily's stuff. Mum's says I'm being selfish and I don't want to share. I just want privacy. I thought giving up my room and moving into a smaller one was a pretty unselfish gesture, but apparently not. What happened next is where I think I crossed the line. Mum was at work on Saturday, so I went ahead and I moved my stuff into the other room. I know doing it behind Mum's back was sneaky, but she was dead set on me and Lily sharing. Lily is lovely and I have nothing against her, but she's four and I'm 15. I need privacy and I want to be able to spend time in my room in the evenings. She goes to bed hours before I do and also have a lie in on weekends. Mum was furious and called me all sorts of names, selfish and greedy, underhanded, etc. I refused to apologize and I left. I went to my dad's house and I've been there since. My dad and my stepmom are both on my side. They think it was ridiculous to expect me to share with a little kid when there were enough rooms available. It's not that I've got a problem with sharing either. I happily share with my 16 year old stepsister at my dad's because there really aren't enough rooms for us all to have our own there. I thought I was in the right until I was telling my friends about it and one of them told me I sounded like a spoiled brat. No, you don't. So Reddit, what do you think? Am I the a-hole? Definitely not. You don't sound at all like a spoiled brat OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole. And your mum wants a built-in babysitter, so the four-year-old stays out of her hair. Yeah, that's a good point. The second top comment says, not the a-hole. Your mum's being totally unreasonable here. You're 15, not five. Of course you need your own space. And moving to a smaller room was actually super mature of you. Your mum's the one being difficult, not you. Like what teenager wants to share with a four-year-old? Different bedtimes, different stuff, different everything. Plus, you need privacy. You're going to be doing homework and stuff while she's playing with toys and watching Peppa Pig or whatever. Your friend calling you spoiled doesn't get it. This isn't about being spoiled. It's about having basic privacy as a teenager. It's not like you're refusing to give up anything. You literally took the smaller room. Stick to your guns on this one. Your mum will get over it eventually. Maybe show her this thread if she doesn't believe that you're in the right here. Yeah, and the comment below that. I mean, OP chose to move into the smaller room. How is that spoiled? I say ditch the friend. Yeah, that's so ridiculous. And yeah, like that comment said, show her the post. Your mum is definitely the un reasonable one here, OP. You're so not the a-hole. I don't even know how you would be. Oh yeah, you're a spoiled brat by being mature. Yeah, okay. Okay, after what we've read today, I've got a really cute wholesome meme. My husband, the best person I've ever met. The illusion of free choice. Oh, that's so cute, isn't it? They're the same. My husband is the best person that I've ever met. That's so cute. If that said Nez and the best cat that I've ever seen, I'd definitely agree with it. Oh my god, they're the same. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful
wonderful time today. That was so fun to film a video with my face in it. I hope you guys don't feel too weirded out by seeing my face. I definitely prefer this over not showing my face. And I also want to steer the channel in the direction of like quality over quantity. So I don't know if every video from now on is going to have my face in it, but it might. And I definitely really enjoyed this, so I am going to try. But yeah, let me know down below what you think in the comments. And also subscribe if you want to. And once again, the comment of the day today goes to Spider Gamer. Day 120 of telling the Vincey fam god awful jokes that I've heard on the internet. Why did the Cyclops shut his school? Because he only had one pupil. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I don't feel like that's a god awful joke. I feel like that's a funny joke. And thank you for sharing that Spider Gamer. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next episode. So make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!